Hello, and welcome to a weekly dose of chaos. This is episode 12. Hell yeah, it is. <laughs> we're back. Yeah. We're fucking back. Sorry about the little hold up, but we're, we're going to continue on. Um, yeah, we had some uh, issues going on, but now we have that all figured out. Yeah. Um, starting off this podcast, we're going to be talking about Mental Health Week. Um, and what it means to us as a community, and uh, the game, how gaming has helped curve some of those um, feeling of anxiousness with the social expansion of having networking across all platforms and everything else. Um, but other than that, on the rest of the agenda, we have a few news topics, especially from a few games being new and remade, um, especially with one specific brand. Um, really coming out of the scene, um, and that being Konami and Silent Hill. Um, so, they recently released the trailer for Silent Hill 2, the remake, a couple days ago. And we just recently watched that, probably maybe two hours ago, all of peace. And, uh... I mean, it brings back nostalgia for sure, but the graphics that are going to go into this are going to make the game that much greater than what it was originally already. I mean, Rico, you've played Silent Hill, and I told me I know you have too. I mean, if you remember anything about the second one, now imagine that's going to be amplified by the time and everything's going to be a lot crispier and smoother rather than glitchy and... Right. Yeah, it gets and you creepier. chased by the py pyramid heads again. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> In more graphic form this time. Yeah, it's... They're supposed to be updating all these characters, and they look like ten times more terrifying than what they were, because now everything's more realistic. So, they they announced that and released all of that, um, but it's going to be a PS5 and uh, PC exclusive for about a year before it'll hit anything else. Nice. Um, but they also released with these projects that there was four other projects they were working on all at once. Um, and another project they said they were working on as a smaller game um, would be Silent Hill Townfall. Um, and there's a trailer out for that as well that we all watched. And oh, yeah. that one looks just as intense as Silent Hill 2 does, but it's going to be a smaller game but a spin-off of the series. Um, so I'm excited to see what that looks like. Um, there's also a movie in development right now. Um, if all of you guys have seen the first Silent Hill that was made in 2006, yeah. um, the original director from that movie is now making the second movie to the series. They've been waiting for that. <laughs> uh, yeah, the movie is going to be called uh, Return of Silent Hill. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, so like... I know we're all fans of at least the movie. Mm -hmm. If yeah, you yeah. haven't played the game fully yet, so. I have not played oh, the game. Yeah. I, I watched a lot of the movies. I've always wanted to actually visit the real town of Silent Hill because I actually found out that Silent Hill actually is real, and the smoke in that movie is actually really—it's not a fog; it's an underground volcano, and there you never know. It's like what else has you never know what's going to erupt kind of thing. It's wild. <laughs> Sounds like a podcast uh, travel vlog right there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Going to the real you thing. See us go <laughs> and watch it be absolutely awful. It'll be the last thing we do. <laughs> that, <laughs> that's our luck right there. Yeah, we're gonna get it recorded, so not if we, anything happens to us, hopefully the recordings at least safe. We're gonna stop, start off bad. We're gonna be chased by pyramid heads right off the fucking bat. It's over. <laughs> <laughs> They're gonna be sick of us just from starting off right there. Yeah, we've seen that running with us. Oh my god, <laughs> he's pyramid head too. No, he's a rectangle head. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so the movie is going to be an adaptation of Silent Hill 2. So it's going to be as tried, uh, it's going to be trying to be as close to the game as humanly possible without messing with too many of the elements that make the, the game and slash movie what it is. Okay. Um, there's obviously going to be a few changes, but, uh, I think it's just going to, like, blow up once it comes out. 
was just like when they tried to re-release Resident Evil, but that version was fucking ass. Yeah. I, that, like, totally left out a lot of fucking parts, so I hope it doesn't end up like that. Right. But if they stuck with the original director, I don't think it'll uh, turn for the worse. Um, another game that they have out that's going to be kind of sort of like a uh, 4v1 situation uh, like the other games we have in our arsenal like uh, Dead by Daylight and stuff like that. Silent Hill has created Silent Hill Ascension, which okay. is going to be sort of a team, sort of a team based sort of thing. Kind of like by Dead by, by Dead by Daylight, uh, Friday the Thirteenth. So it's a four v one situation, and it's gonna be like Pyramid Head versus like four survivors that have been in Silent Hill. Yeah. Oh, oh shit. Or like sh shit like that. That's just gonna randomly spawn. So yeah. I feel like that's kind of exciting, at least. Yeah. Well, we, we, which one of the weakest of the group? <laughs> like Lesser Dead or something. Yeah, it's damn near like that. It's getting to that point. <laughs> kind of crazy how it all turned out like that, but, uh, I mean, it's a good angle to go with it. I feel like that's a whole other development that they're going to be pretty successful in. I mean, they have a variety of enemies and creatures throughout the years that are honestly equal as equally as terrifying as ever. So they could just pop a bunch of shit in there and it's going to turn out great. I mean, their character line is endless from... All their games start to finish there's always something to tell um they described that game as a video streaming experience that uh they use the only tagline in it is face your trauma together oh, no. i feel like i'm going to therapy when they tell me this oh, yeah. yes <laughs> um but the interesting part about this is two other companies that make games similar to this took part in this project. The same developers from Dead by Daylight also took place in helping develop this project. Okay. So it should be almost flawless when it's done, just because of how many developments and people with experience they already have on the team. Okay. Um, the last game that was announced on that list was Silent Hill X. Um, there was also a trailer out for that. <clears throat> There's not a lot of information out about it. The trailer is only about 30 seconds long. Um, it showed the logo with a lot, along with some background images of what things kind of looked like. It kind of looked like it was going to take place in an Asian setting of some sort. Oh yeah, that was... Yeah. So that should be interesting considering it's not actually in Silent Hill itself. No. Um... But still unsure of what the game is actually supposed to be based off of or looks like currently. But that's all I have for that section, at least on Silent Hill. But I think for them to be working on so many projects at once is super ambitious. Mm -hmm. Especially, you know, you have to have so many teams running and there's a high chance for failure with so many being run at once. And what if one doesn't pop off as good as the next, or you release them too fast back to back, and then all of your games aren't getting enough attention because they're spread out through the five games that are going on currently. And you got the years that are coming out together. They're all just supposed to be released between the years of like from December, starting on all the way through twenty twenty three. I feel like they're uh, all going to be released. And then that's the, that, that's I don't know if that's I think that's a good thing. It is a good thing, but... I like, mean, it, it could it, be a good strategy. It, 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 but it depends on what... How long the games are, and... Well, I know some of them... How long they have apart from each other. Some of them are smaller, and then one is completely multiplayer player online-based. Yeah. So that's fine. But the remake and everything else is mostly what's concerned with, because yeah. the remake is supposed to come out before anything in December. Yeah, usually. Um, but the rest of these projects are slowly being developed. And, I mean, we could be looking at another few years for that movie yeah. to be released. Yeah, that would be better thing. They admit, not all those in one one couple months, like to a year, like, like spread them out. Like maybe, like maybe two uh, a year. So just to keep it fresh and give it time to bring it out before bringing another one into it. Well, see I if, see like if they I'm like gonna, it. If I, they don't like it, bring it up then. Why go, keep going with the rest of it if the other ones fail before the other ones get out? 
Well, I feel like the remake's instantly going to be a hit. Yes. Honestly, because I, I want to play the remake. For sure. <laughs> but as far as the other projects, like smaller games involved, they definitely have to pace that kind of stuff because it could be detrimental. Like, yeah. if, if someone finishes the remake and wants to play that game later on, I'd suggest, like, maybe a three to six month time span before releasing yeah. that smaller game. Well, that time, that is time to breathe and to see how it does. If yeah, you, you gotta think then, about it, they're gonna add more DLCs to other stuff mm -hmm. and expand the game yeah. itself. Right. So how big is it going to lead, and are things going to overlap too much to where one's not going to get enough attention and yeah. eventually just as a, as be a waste as of time? As a Nintendo, two of the games came out almost like a month apart from each other, so the other game got smothered, you know, and got more attention, because everyone liked the other game better than the other, because they never let it breathe. Yeah, and it's just, it's hard to do that because they have so many good things in the running for them, and obviously a large fan base, but they don't want to hyper expand and then make these games glitchy yeah yeah because they give it time to breathe they did time to get it perfectly before releasing it i feel like they've got most of the groundwork done already for these projects and it's just a matter of when um but speaking of nintendo alan wake uh remastered got released on that by surprise, just out of nowhere. There was no announcement for anything released by Nintendo. Yeah. Um, it was already out on the other systems, but they just released it on the Switch for whatever reason. They just felt trigger happy. They already heard our podcast. <laughs> <laughs> it could be. Rico met, Rico did mention that one way. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> and one day, that, well, I would expect our Nintendo without someone not listening to somebody. Because that, that's. That's that's really a coincidence. We just got done talking about it, and then kind of released it now. Yeah, and it's like we're gonna steal your idea. <laughs> <laughs> Thank hey, welcome, you. Welcome to, <laughs> welcome to my world. Things do that all the time. Yeah. Um, the game is currently priced at thirty bucks. Um, and it takes out about uh twelve point nine gigabytes of memory on your uh Switch. Uh, the game company Remedy has not, however, mentioned releasing its upcoming sequel of Alan Wake 2 that's coming off and the spin-off Alan, Wake, Alan Wake's American Nightmare. Um, both of those games are currently in development, um, and it's hard to say what, the, what Nintendo will do if it's successful. You think they'll adopt that to their library? Yeah, just yeah. if, this, if it feels really good, because that's mm -hmm. other, than, other than Zelda, they will really have other good games. Were good graphics other than those two, and maybe Mario Mario World Odyssey was a good one. I mean, Nintendo has already a pretty big yeah, arsenal like, that like, makes them a like, powerhouse. This, this, this is like the first one came out. For Nintendo that's not like, like, the, like anything to do with Mario or. Mm. Well, the only or... thing I feel like about owning a Nintendo is when you own a Nintendo, you own a Nintendo to own. All the things that come with it. Yeah. Right? Like, you're not going to get Super Mario Odyssey on PlayStation. Yeah. Right. No, or you're not going <laughs> to get, like, Mario Kart on Xbox. It's just not going to happen. When you buy a Nintendo, you buy it to play those games that come with it. So, and they have their own arsenal already. I mean, it's good that they're expanding the library it's just what really fits their category and how compatible is it going to be with their players and i like i said if nintendo were to start going an adult route and start getting like games like with bigger titles such as like call of duty or battlefield on something like that yeah that i feel like they'd blow up because they were the first mobile gaming platform really mm -hmm. yeah after like the they like, like this uh switch not the U. After that, like, they went to handheld. Yeah, the Switches were the last one so far. Well, I mean, besides PSP. PSP was, like, yeah, great. Yeah, but, but, but it, was, it was good for well, it was also PlayStation 2. Yeah, but, like, they also had the PS Vita that came out, and that, yeah. was, a, that was pretty great. But Nintendo, like, brought the whole new de definition to it and changed the game of being able to play anywhere. Yeah. As far as, like... Having online games. You got games the handheld as well. one, you got the one, the other one that you can do. It's handheld too, but you can bring the whole system with you. 
Going from a 64 to a Wii. Into Wii U, and he just keeps building into more of a computer. Yeah. Right. And now, he's, now he's just handheld now. And they're going to be like, try these Nintendo sunglasses. Now you can play the game in real life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He said, oh shit, Bowser. <laughs> no, no. I heard the short thing. You just see Bowser. Mm-hmm. Come back. <laughs> oh, no, yeah, no. bad thing to do at work. <laughs> You're gonna Sorry. start swinging on your well, boss. You, you, you turn around, you, it'll be Nick right there, and you go. You think it was a little. Was Walt, or was Walt, or some, one of the villains, and he just punched him because he was he came in the way of the villain you were about to punch, and he's right there. Listen, Dick is just a villain as is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He he was born to be a villain. Yeah. Um, as far as the other thing on my list is just Overwatch Two. Uh, Blizzard plans to bring back uh Bastion and Junk. <laughs> Junk Town into the game again. Um, and they've been having hero lockout problems. So the pe- people buy these characters after earning a certain amount of credits, and now they can't play as the characters because they're locked out of them. Oh, that's uh, so, on top of all their issues that they're having with their servers, now this is another problem they're having. Uh, they should have just left what we were doing, man. And right. it's too late to go back to Overwatch 1 because now they shut down all their servers for that, just for this to open. Yeah. I think they move too fast. Even though Blizzard is doing great things, they need to slow down. Yeah. And They're already above every other console. You just take your time, build the game up, and make sure it goes out good. I mean, how can they not be successful right now with Activision backing them and World of Warcraft is starting to gain its hype again with all the classic modes coming back and everything else and all the original fan base finding time to do that in their days now. But really what it comes down to is Overwatch is their bread and butter right now. And this is the thing they should be taking care of the most. And I know it's hard to deal with server issues. That's one thing. But to have all these other little activities in the game like missing cosmetics and glitching and OP characters because they can kill you in two punches. That was the problem when they removed Bastion originally from Overwatch 2 because it was too damn overpowered. He was like killing people in two hits. Like how's that even fair? No, it's not. (laughs) So now they're re-releasing the character, obviously nerfed. So he is not going to have as much power, but balanced as everybody else. But I feel it's still going to be a problem. Yeah, yeah they're going to add a twist to it. It's Bastion, honestly. Yeah. Like, how can it not? You know Bastion's on Overwatch. He's going to fuck you up. That one guy is, like, just being an asshole. Yeah. <laughs> That's all I had on my agenda. Uh, Tony, what do you got on yours today? Well, I was going to continue with the, uh, the Hell and Wake one, which we were talking about. Um, I, was, I saw that the remake you know, on PlayStation. I was debating like, buying it because the last one I had was on 360. But like, as I saw like the trailer of it, like, I wanted to like, you know, buy it and stuff like that because me and him used to get creeped out by it because... Like that one scene by the bridge, like he would, the person would be gone, standing in front of you, and then we're all like into it, and we're like in the darkness, and we're like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. it was annoying. <laughs> and then a flashlight kept going out on us. So I'm like curious, like when they make that sequel, like what would be in it, and characters and all. So. Well, I'm ready to jump again. All lights have to be off, no lights, and you just have to play it in the dark. See, you, have to, thing, you have to get full effect. This spinoff one is what interests me, was when they started uh, talking about Alan Wake's American Nightmare. I wonder what the hell that is going to be like. Oh, God. These two are already going to be bad. It's a nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be good, though, nevertheless, but people better be ready for it. Like, in the one thing that's crazy right now is horror games are taking the cake right now. Like, yeah. Justin, you reported about Scorn, and it's already being voted to take ye- Game of the Year. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's that's crazy that, it, like, just in a 
short ass time of being released, it's already being voted to take game of the year. Yeah. yeah the, the graphic, it's creepy. You see how creepy it was? <laughs> yeah, but they've been releasing gameplay, and I've been watching it gradually as it, like, just steadily comes out, and I'm like, this is fucking disgusting. Yeah. <laughs> like, the, at one point, it looked like the thing, whatever the fuck you are, it, like, you were sticking your penis into, like, something that was sucking it in. <laughs> it was weird as fuck, bro. It's like this. It's an open up, the thing will start coming out. And then, ultimately, it's all someone's mouth. Yeah. <laughs> it's fucking and no. Can't, and they can't. Like if you watch the actual gameplay, I saw, was watching part of it. It was like you were fall, like looking at this track thing, and then you like interact with it, and you like for whatever reason, I don't know what would compel you to make a game that's like okay, this thing looks interesting and dangerous. I'm gonna fucking pelvic thrust it and see what the fuck happens, and that's what happens. It just sucks the lower half of his region like it was sucking the soul out of him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was weird. And that's just the first so, one. Yeah, right. They fucked up with that, that shit. That's the very end of the game. That was annoying, dude. Like, yeah, if, if, once you get past and... there, then you can see the most of it. They can't get past the first little no, area no, of that. I mean, seeing the things that they built to, like, kill things. Yeah. And the interactive stuff. But that was just fucking weird. I'm like, there's no way that just happened. And, like, you're okay with that. And it doesn't make any sense to be a good game of the year. It could be. The developers were like, yeah. yeah. That's, that's what his mind. Hey, look, you think that part's weird. Wait till he sees what it really does. <laughs> oh. <laughs> cool, you'd be the first one to find it. Gives him the best orgasm he's ever had. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, yeah, I'm talking about, uh, wait, would you, like, would you like to see a VR of that? Oh, yeah, yes. a VR um can't wait. <laughs> All I gotta say is if we play that shit or even that other one, the Outlast <laughs> VR, no one's in the room with us, you alright? <laughs> Because so the minute we even feel you breathe, we're probably going to swing. <laughs> because okay. it's Like, speaking sound. of VR, though, have you guys seen that, like, the back room stuff? Yeah. 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 That shit is terrifying. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The last one I seen, they had, like, a huggy buggy thing, and it was fucking chasing this dude through the hallway. I was like, that thing is actually pretty fucking fast. Yeah, trying to run from that thing. <laughs> 